creating automatic player movement, enemy movement, is needed, right? We don't control all the characters. We need them to move around. So I'm making a little platformer here, and my enemy, Mr. Robot, maybe I shouldn't say that, Orange Robot, <laughs> uh, is in need of movement. To get you up to speed here, I have the capsule collider already on, ready to rock, everything standard there. You could use a different collider if you want, box collider, so on and so forth. Rigid 2D, rigid body 2D as well. I froze my X and Y location because they're just going back and forth. All right? And I am doing this within a contained area. So that is how I'm going to control where my enemy is, is on collision. So I'm going to have obstacles around this particular enemy. If you're doing it across the screen, you would want bumpers on each side. Okay, let's go ahead and hit add component. And I need a script. I'm going to call this orange enemy script. And open this guy up. And hopefully I should have it. Yep, there we are. Great. All right. And then, oh, I need to go find it. Assets. I'm going to move it into my script folder because I'm trying to stay organized. There we are. All right, and let me just, I won't need that. Let's full screen this. So what we do need to make this happen is we're going to need to be aware of, well, the direction of the player and ensure that we have a vector three to produce the movement. I'm going to put both of those variables outside as global. The direction is equal to one. Direction we're just going to use to multiply what the the numbers by one or negative one to make sure if, when the player hits an obstacle, as I stated before, they will reverse uh, the directions. And so movement, there we are. And start, we're not going to need it all. So let's get rid of all that. All right. So we have a vector three for movement. This is looking great. Void on or void update. So now this is where we're going to define movement we declared it above and it's going to be a new vector three okay and what it's going to be though is this is the speed of your enemy or whoever you're having move automatically i'm going to say two and then i'm going to multiply this two by direction and i'll explain that again in a second zero f my enemy is not going to be going up and down so the y can be zero my enemy is not in three dimensions this is for 2d so, and what did I do here? New. Oh, I have an extra comma. There we are. So now that I have my vector three set up for the movement, I need a transform. I'm going to grab the transform. And again, transform is this right here. And then I'm going to grab position. So I'm literally grabbing the stuff that we can see and then inspect of unity. Transform position. Um, I would do a plus equals, but just to keep this straightforward for you, I'm going to do an equals sign. And what we're going to do is grab what the transform position used to be equal to. And then we are going to be adding to that the movement, right? That new vector we made and the location stuff times delta times time delta time, right? So depending on how long it has taken for this game to update, we want to make sure to account for time and produce the and multiply by it. If it's been five seconds, we'll make that movement five times, so on and so forth. That's why our time is coming into play. So at this point, let's go ahead. I'm going to save all this and run into things. Uh, and now we're stuck forever. So with two obstacles, we want to make sure we have the ability to turn around. So I'm going to do a on collision. Make sure you choose 2D here. And this is where direction comes into play. Direction equals direction times negative one. Okay. And that's what this is here. Right. So now on the event that we enter a collision, we make direction equal to what it used to be equal times negative one. So then the player will start heading the other direction when it hits the side. Right. Well, a negative times a positive is positive, and it will start moving back the other way. Let's go ahead and test that. Boom, and boom, and 
Boom. Let's throw in one more thing that I think's fun. I have my character here. I want to have them flip around when they hit the one side. So it looks like I'm using... Oh, yep, right here. So I'm going to go ahead and open this up. And this is the default application in Windows for editing photos. And what it allows me to do that I'm interested in is flip. And then I'm going to say save a copy. And this location's great. I'm going to say, I don't know, mirror. Sure, hit save. And with that saved, I'm going to go grab it real quick and slap it in here okay now what we can do so this looks a bit more professional i'm gonna do a public sprite and this way we'll have the character turn around when they are going one direction or the other so i declared this as an array okay and what we're going to do now is we're going to use the index of an array. So if direction equals equals one, we're gonna have our, let's get the component. We need the sprite render and the sprite. And we want it set it equal to sprites. And I'm going to have that one, uh, the left, the right direction be the second index or one. And again, keep in mind here, let's go back here, player or orange enemy. So here's the sprite renderer. Here's the sprite. That's what we're referencing here. Now I'm going to copy this and then say else. And I'm just going to command C to paste it. I'm going to have it be equal to the default direction. All right. Let me save all this. What we need to fill in, though, is our array. Shrink this down. And here we are. Sprites. Two of them. Index 0, index 1, just like we did here. Okay. My index 1 was going to be the left-facing one. And index two will be our left facing one. And let me control S to save it all. Let's see. Boom. Boom. And there we have it. A turning around automated enemy. Ta-da!